And our final panelist tonight, today, is Peter Senge. Peter is the only panelist who's come from outside of British Columbia, so uh, it'll be very interesting to see what Peter's perspective is after listening to all of our villagers from British Columbia. Peter is an author and a senior lecturer in leadership, so it's exactly what we've just been talking about at MIT Sloan School of Management, and he's lectured all over the world. In fact, Peter just returned from China and Bhutan just yesterday. Uh, Peter has um, recently joined forces with someone else who you know, His Holiness, who is Daniel Goleman, who is an expert in social and emotional learning because Peter is an expert in systems thinking and in leadership. And I think, Peter, you became increasingly interested in children and the development of children and that aspect of their development, social and emotional learning. And so he brings a rich background to this conversation. Peter. Mm. Thank you. So first off, as the, uh, as the visitor here, let me say um, it's always a very special treat for me to get to spend time here. I think there are some wonderful, wonderful things. And these folks are wonderful illustrations uh, of, um, you know, something we're looking for all around the world in a, in a way. I mean, we all know the problems in the world. And we're really looking for tangible examples of people starting to change, individually and collectively. And I don't think there's any more powerful, kind of emotionally evocative way to feel that than to feel it in children. Children are what connect us to the future. The future is an abstraction. It's a bunch of ideas. And for most of us, of course, a lot of fears and anxieties until we really have a conversation with a child. In a conversation with a child, the future is real. So um, I guess one of the things I'm... <laughs> I hadn't thought about this this way. I guess this kind of uh, ongoing odyssey to find places in the world where the future that we desire is starting to show up. There's an old uh, line in English, uh, the future is here already, it's just not evenly distributed. So I don't want to say this to in any way imply I think Vancouver is paradise and BC is a paragon or anything like that. Because when you live in a place, you're very aware of all the shortcomings. You're very aware of what needs to be done. But I also want you to know, as a, as a visitor, I, I admire a great deal the, the sort of commitment as illustrated in all the people up here, and it's, it's one of the reasons I do love to come here. So, I have a little different type of puzzle question. Um, I, I'm trained in a science that many people would say is not even quite a science yet. Maybe in 50 or 100 years it will be uh, understanding complexity, understanding systems. So, as Maria just said, the little exchange a minute ago with Tamara when you said, you know, it, well, people just have to see the larger context in which they're operating. That's a beautiful example. And as I look at human evolution, I think that the societies that have survived for a long time have found ways to understand who they are in their context. There's only one small problem. For the first time in history, our context is the planet. It's not Tibet. It's not Bhutan. It's not a, a Vancouver Island. It is literally the, the, the world as a whole. For the first time in our history, human beings are shaping life on the planet. So we've talked about a lot of um, kind of basics. I don't mean that in the sense of trivial, fundamentals. Of, of ethics, compassion, emotions. But we don't think of this as an ethical issue. What I mean by this 
and just holding up the one that's handy to me. Any of us could hold up the one that's handy to most of us. We don't think of the fact that when we use our technology, when we plug this into the wall, a little different in BC, but not a lot different. In America, 70% of the electricity that powers this device comes from burning coal. In China, it's about 80% to 90%. We don't think of that as an ethical issue. We don't think of driving our cars as an ethical issue, although obviously some people do. We don't think of these small, mundane, everyday acts like the food we eat and where it comes from and the impacts of that food system on the farming communities who produce the food, which in America travels typically about 2,000 miles from where it's grown to where it's purchased. So the question I have, I'm not even sure the best way to express it, but I have a hunch through my example, His Holiness is starting to already know what the question is. I can fully understand that in the progression of education, laying a foundation of understanding myself, understanding the good emotions, the bad emotions, that inner choreography that leads to sources of emotions, as His Holiness was explaining, is fundamental. I can fully understand the learning how to deal with conflicts with another human being, really developing the social competencies to navigate our lives in the context of our families, our friends, the playgrounds we go on to, all the influences in our lives, good and bad, as we're a teenager growing up, is very fundamental. But it seems to me there's yet a third domain of ethics and morality, which now, for the first time, is maybe so important that without it, none of the others ultimately will matter. So again, I'm not sure exactly how to ask the question, but I'll just say it the best I can figure, which is that if we really understand the developmental process of a human being, individually and collectively, how can we guide ourselves and obviously, how can we enable our children and guide our children to develop that larger sense of compassion, that larger awareness Compassion at some level is always a result of awareness. And if I'm not aware, I really can't be compassionate. I think the genius or the sense of concern of other spirit beings. Uh, there are also called the element, element respect. Uh, respect comes uh, oneness of human being. Uh, then uh, Environment. Environment. Oh, yes. Environment. Ben. This is uh, referring to the poet who oh. made uh, beautiful allusion to the environmental issue. Oh. So, yes. the environment. In ancient time, I think when I was very young, <laughs> you see, no concept of uh, importance of ecology. When we were in Fasta, is there any water we can drink? <laughs> when I uh, come to India and I visit, eventually visit different countries, then you see there is sort of distinction. This water can be drink, this water cannot. <laughs> and then question immediately, why? Distorted. 
<laughs> so then, listen, explanation from experts, environment experts. And then really, as the poetry way uh, mentioned, our planet, our only home, we cannot go other, as you mentioned, sometimes I also mentioned, moon, beautiful, remain in the sky, we remain on this living planet that looks uh, in a clean way, clear sky, or uh, the full moon, beautiful. But if we try to go there and settle there, impossible, <laughs> horrible. <laughs> So this is the only our home. So then, uh, in the concern of future generation, uh, the protection of environment is very, very uh, important. So these, uh, I think, are physical sort of level, uh, sort of sensory level experience. I think. Uh, not like violence. Violence immediately strikes on our mind. Oh. Environment degenerate, not immediately sort of strike. Strike. The Kasole. Without sort of what's today, uh, much sort of striking sort of ex your appearance or experiences. Uh, gradually damage done. Once we actually feel oh, some lung effect or some sort of problem with eyes, then could be too late. So therefore, uh, you see, we, re we really need education, awareness, true education, the importance of the environment. So, uh, Sort of sense of concern of well being of humanity, sense of concern of the happy world, including in healthy sort of air, or healthy sort of city, planet. Then, you see, you develop genuine sense of concern of these things. So, this, the awareness is huge to intelligence, the intelligence, the intelligence, the the Really is the key that is going to help us motivate to do something. Um, and then it's awareness is really the key to help us be motivated to do something. Awareness is there to or directly to something, mainly sensory level. Uh, then mental level. Now these things are not necessarily yes. because of the, uh, the exist present, uh, presently but danger in the future. So only mental level. So education, awareness, education, explanation. Ningdo so in a sense, um, when we are talking about a global compassion, when we are talking about a global compassion, there is also, and also universal compassion. And universal this. compassion, there is an element of a sense of kind of, uh, um, kind of uh, a sense of courage, of imagination involved in it. And in order to have that kind of courage, of ima imagination, you really need to have a depth of conviction that would give rise to it. And since the environmental degradation, it, you know, kind of effects tend to be gradual and insidious, not obvious, you, you need to use a lot of thinking and understanding in order to bring that kind of courageous imagination. Thank you. <laughs> 